Okay, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to class. Thank you for uh, being here and continuing, you know, with your interest in learning more about prayer and intercession. We will pray and get started. So I want to request somebody from class to please lead us in prayer. You can use the mic and pray into the mic. Someone different. I think Rin has already prayed once. Uh, even Sean has prayed in the class, I remember. Anyone else who hasn't prayed? Come on. Vimal. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for a new day you gave in our life, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for this session, Lord Jesus. Help us to know more about your word about prayer, about how to spend time with you, Lord Jesus. Help us to grow in faith. Help us to grow in spiritually, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, all glory and honor belongs to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Vimal. Um, so a quick note about the first graded assignment as the online students call it and the midterm exam for the in-person students or the on-campus students uh, you will have your exam this week okay on campus and online students uh, your question paper is already up so it's a different question paper for the on-campus students okay so uh, i think diana ma'am will inform you about the exam the chapters you can study are from cha chapter 1 to chapter 9. So for everybody, it's chapter 1 to chapter 9. Um, for everybody, for this first exam, it's an open book. You can see a book, but you really have to know your subject to answer the questions, even though it is an open book. So just made it a little easier. You can use your Bibles also, no problem. Uh, but I'm really looking at the answers. So if you've not understood, you will not be able to answer. Okay, so that's the thing. Uh, all the best. Just go through review. Yes. Okay, so for the online students, it is for 40 marks. For the on campus students, it is for 75 marks. It's a one hour paper. One hour. Okay, so you've got to be ready to answer. You have to write and uh, hand it back to. Uh, the BC staff. All right, sure. So with that good news, we will go further into, uh, yes, yes. Sorry? Huh? Yes, yes, it will. In the class as in not during the lectures, it's a separate time which they will allot you when you have to sit and write your exam. Yeah, I think most probably it will be in the afternoon. Yeah. Yes. I think that I cannot answer. It depends on each lecturer. So it depends on the question itself. Yeah. But when we set the question paper, we, we plan it in such a way that you can manage it in one hour. Okay. So how many other questions you will be able to manage? It. Okay, good. So I hope all your doubts are cleared. Any other doubts? What questions? Huh? <laughs> what? I didn't get it. Example. Oh, come on. I'm sure. I'm sure you will be able to handle it. I don't think I'll give you any example, Prince. You will be perf you'll be fine when you look at the questions. Don't worry. Yeah. So I'm just quickly looking at the chat here. Mm, yes. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so Krisha, for the online paper, what is the minimum word limit for the first three questions? So since this is an online paper, Krisha, you actually don't have a time limit. So it's really up to you. I would say um, you look at the sections, like if it's a long answer, then 
you could write maybe three paragraphs or if it is a short answer you can just write one paragraph so it's totally up to you uh, sometimes students have so much information to put in they write two pages for one long answer but it's really up to you okay so online students there's no uh, i'm not putting any limit on the words it's it's up it's totally your decision i hope that helps yeah so was there some other question here i will not be able to <laughs> give you more details about the paper uh, it's one hour it has enough number of questions that you can easily manage okay that's all i'm going to say uh, the this time it is open book i don't know about next time because it's your first midterm exam uh, i thought okay let's make it as easy as possible so yeah but please study and come otherwise you won't be able to answer okay sure all right so let's go into today's uh, topic this is chapter 10 yes mostly after yeah yes answers uh you mean seating arrangement see i i mean i don't know exactly how it will be but it will be in such a way that you know uh <laughs> there will be a distance between students but then you're in bible college i think distance or no distance should actually not matter because you'll be looking at your books right okay fine so don't worry don't worry about the question seating arrangement all that let's let's get into the chapter here okay chapter 10 persistence in prayer so so far we've learned about um personal prayer how to build up our own personal prayer and in the last session we talked a little bit about prophetic prayer you know how hearing from god helps us pray better okay because if we don't know the specific will of god in certain situations we need the specific will isn't it um so unless we hear from god as to what god is going to do or you know what is god's will for somebody's life uh it becomes difficult to pray focused prayer so god reveals god reveals in scripture we've seen that he reveals we said that if there are things that lay ahead maybe a warning or um, you know if um, someone um, has a certain destiny in god god may reveal that you know way ahead uh, you you may have uh, somebody pray over a person even a child and say oh this child is called for ministry so how do they know how do they know that uh, god has a call on a child child's life and that uh, at some point in their lives they will be serving god because of the prophetic okay prophetic uh, we see that prophecy is a gift from god it's a gift and it reveals it reveals many things not just about the future but it could also um, we we use the term prophetic generally for some of the revelation gifts you know things like word of knowledge word of wisdom now, these are gifts which are there in first corinthians chapter 12 so broadly we use prophetic for all of these revelatory gifts so when we are praying god may reveal something of the past which is word of knowledge okay or god may reveal something of the future we tend to call it prophecy okay many a time we call it prophecy or god might reveal the solution to a problem that is word of wisdom when we don't know what exactly to do you know how the um the um uh, disciples went to jesus when they had to pay taxes and they asked him lord like we have to pay taxes and what did jesus say you go you'll find a coin in the fish's mouth what is that how did jesus know so it's a gift in operation it's solving the problem in that moment so we generally call it word of wisdom 
okay all these come under the category of the prophetic so god can reveal past present future anything to help us pray more aligned to his will and his purpose so it's important as people who are praying yes we have to be very um, you know it helps to be disciplined and we talked about that you know if you set a time aside you plan um what prayer points you are going to pray for all that so it's very structured planned prepared organized kind of prayer but in our prayer we have to be open to the leading of the holy spirit so the holy spirit might see i might be praying with a certain idea in mind but the holy spirit might suddenly reveal something else to me so that is prophetic so in our prayer we have to make space for the prophetic because otherwise there can be some prayers which we are praying which is not at all aligned to the purpose of god you understood we end up becoming very stuck so we saw all the examples you know we saw amos how god revealed that there's going to be um uh, you know destruction coming upon the people and uh, immediately he uses that to pray to god so when god reveals something that revelation it can be about a person it can be about myself it can be about my family or it can be about somebody else either an individual or let's say a church or um, let's say uh, a city so when god reveals something i also was telling all of us it is not to go and tell okay so the first thing that we have to do whenever god reveals something is what what should we do if god reveals something you have a dream god reveals something what to do i can't hear you pray pray yes pray okay so that is the default response which we need to have unless god puts it in our hearts and says you have to go and tell this and prophetic words are generally um for an audience okay so we can also find out like who should be listening to this prophetic word is it one person is it the whole church is it uh, is it um, you know a larger group of people so whenever a word has to be shared we have to ask all these questions because if we are not careful if we don't have wisdom we will end up let's say it's a message only for rin okay and what if i tell the whole class it may not be appropriate all right um for example i'll just say uh, joseph you remember joseph he had a he had a dream uh, that you know one he had all these dreams that um uh, what was it all the planets something like that the heavenly bodies were coming and bowing to one particular body and then similarly he saw that there were wheat yeah uh, uh, the swans they they were all bowing to one particular you know um, a wheat crop or sheaf or whatever you call it so he interpreted that and he said that you will all bow down to me he told his brothers that that was not appropriate actually he should have just prayed about it did it happen in his life it happened but he did a mistake that was not the right time and that was they were not the right audience to reveal god's purpose for his life because what did it create jealousy it created jealousy so i'm giving you an example so whenever we receive a word from god you pray you pray it through you pray it through one good thing you can do uh, is to write it down you know sometimes it helps to just jot down your dreams you jot down the prophetic word maybe when you're praying you get a word from god you quickly write it down okay god spoke to me about uh you know about my my talent that i must use it for him i got this reference of scripture just write it down and you begin to pray in line with that so that is about prophetic prayer okay so now let's move on to persistence in prayer do you think there are times when we need to be um 
you know that we should not give up in prayer yeah so anyone here had an experience where you've prayed for something you know it's god's will for your life uh, but you know you've prayed for it for a very long time maybe it's not yet happened it's still not happened yes chira you want to share no i don't want to share okay no problem okay sure you have something to share please use the mic Can you hear me? Yeah, it's a bit embarrassing, but uh, I actually prayed for a phone that I wanted to buy for a very long time, which took about uh, I think two years to get in my price range. Mm -hmm. So I pray, I prayed for that phone, and I got and at the right time I got the right price. So that's what I want to say. Okay, so Sham, I couldn't hear you very well. You prayed for a phone. Yeah, to buy a phone. Okay. Which. Um, Uh, which was a bit costly at the time, so mm -hmm. I wanted to like come down a proper price for me to able to afford it. Okay. So it took, I think it took about a year and a half. Then uh, okay. it got reduced to that proper price, and I got what I wanted. So yeah, I think that's one persistent oh. prayer you can say. Okay, that's nice. So year and a half is a fairly long time to pray for that one request. Uh, but you know, sometimes there are things that you are probably praying for many more years. so it happens to you know uh, some of us so these things can happen but when we know that something is the will of god what we want to encourage is we should not give up on it okay we should never give up on it we have to pray consistently we have to pray persistently so i don't know if you've heard the testimonies of so many different pastors i've not heard it from one pastor but so many pastors when they started their ministry there were initial years of struggle and you know god gave them a vision that they will they the church will be filled with so many people hundreds of people uh, but in the initial years they struggled and they were wondering hey i have only five people i have only 10 people what is happening god you promised but time is just passing by but you know there are testimonies where you know they share how after a certain period you know like threshold suddenly the church started growing it started increasing uh, and it started thriving what if they had given up okay and especially when it comes to church planting church planting um you know you pioneer a work a ministry work somewhere it's not easy maybe you're the you're the first person who's going there you may have to face many challenges you may have to work very hard okay so when all that is going on and you're praying and trusting god that your ministry will be fruitful sometimes we may have the tendency to give up because it's just so hard so difficult but god's word encourages us and says you must pray with persistence so persistence means don't give up don't give up you remember hannah the mother of samuel she did not have children whereas you know her rival penina she had children and here is hannah praying how often is she praying every time she went i mean obviously she is praying the whole time but especially when she visited the temple you know she prayed she sought god she did not give up was it a difficult situation for her very much okay uh, was it possible for her at some points to think that maybe god is not going to give me the answer to this prayer maybe god has changed his mind right so we end up having all these doubts in our minds but if there is something which is in the will of god okay and we are sure that hey the prayer which i am praying it's very much aligned to the word of god it's very much aligned to the will of god the purpose of god for my life i will not give up so if you are very clear hey god has put a calling on my life let's say a pastoral calling he's put a calling on my life he called me here to plant this church it's looking very difficult you know 3 years 5 years but you're very clear there is a call of god on my life and god has promised me that i am going to minister to whatever hundreds and thousands of people 
you don't give up on it just because you don't see anything happening around you okay so that is the point never give up never give up or persistence persistence so let's quickly look at a couple of um, passages here in scripture that talk about persistence so there are two uh, passages in the book of luke one about a uh, uh, you know about <coughs> of a neighbor okay and the other about a like a wicked judge or a ruler um so let's quickly turn to these passages luke chapter 11 verses 5 through 8 um i would need one of us to please read it and then luke chapter 18 verses 1 through 8 another person can read so uh, we can quickly go through both of these passages okay anand you can read please use the mic and he said to them which of you shall have have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him friend lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and i have nothing to set before him and he will answer from within and say do not trouble me the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give to you i say to you though he will not rise and give to him because He is his friend. It because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Okay, so it's a friend. Okay, approaching another friend. Ah, uh, but what time is he approaching this friend? At a time when it is uncomfortable. Okay, people are resting. Um, so just hold on, hold on to it, Nikhil. So, ah, uh, one friend is approaching another friend at midnight to get some food for a. visitor so it's a very odd time right and what do we see there that particular person okay he might uh, the the one um you know who is being asked for a favor even if he is unwilling or unhappy you know because of the timing and the discomfort to him uh, the bible says that he would still get up and go and give the friend what he needs because the other person is persisting or he is not giving up right so sometimes what happens just because a request is you know repeatedly coming and that individual is not giving up what do you do you're like okay fine just take it leave me alone it's time to sleep so with that kind of an attitude this particular friend actually gives what he requires we are being given this example not to say that you know we are irritating god or frustrating god with our repeated requests that's not the point the point is to understand the meaning of persistence so the friend who needed something he doesn't give up he goes even if it is 12 midnight he goes he has a need you know for bread or something to give the visitor and so he makes sure that he asks for it and he asks for it repeatedly because his intention is i've got to get it to give it to the visitor so basically what we can take from this is never give up attitude even if the situation is very adverse late in the night unwilling friend okay but i need something to give to the guest so i don't have an option i will ask the friend who is able to give me something so in the same way we must approach god and god is reminding us be persistent don't stop till you get what you need okay we'll see other other uh, truths later on so let's now quickly go to luke chapter 18 verses 1 through 8 now he was telling them a parable to show that all at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart saying in a certain city there was a judge who did not fear god and did not respect man there was a widow in the city and she kept coming to him saying 
give me a legal protection from my opponent for a while he was unwilling Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Vina. So in this case, there is uh, an old lady and she approaches the ruler for justice. Now the ruler, not because he was good and gracious. You see, if the ruler was good and gracious, he would want to do justice for that lady. But he is going to do justice for her because she's not giving up. So what does Jesus want us to note in both of these you know, stories or, or uh, parables, the persistence of the friend, the persistence of the woman, okay, of the widow, yeah. Sorry? Oh, am I muted? I can't hear uh, what Prince is saying, actually. It's muted. It's actually... Not muted here. Uh, Meena, can you hear now? Okay. So it was on. It was on. I don't know why. Maybe I was not holding it close enough. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I think it's fine now. All right. So what I'm saying is, um, Jesus wanted us to make a note of the persistence of these people so in prayer if you ask for something repeatedly is it okay or not okay it's okay okay do you think god will feel nagged what is this always these people come in the same prayer point prayer list they bring and they keep saying, God, give, 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 or do this, do this. Uh, Ma'am, I think when it comes to persistence, it doesn't mean, in persistent prayer, it doesn't mean like um, we uh, keep on nagging God or keep asking the same thing. I think you pray once and you have faith in what you prayed. I think that's the persistent that uh, is, is the I think that's the person that God's talking about. Not in prayer, not keep on continually praying the same thing over and over, but to pray and have faith in what you prayed. And to have a strong faith on, the, on that matter, then that's the persistence you, uh, you need to have in prayer. Okay, sure. So when you pray once, you have faith in it. Okay, you have faith in it. So in both of these examples, we saw two unwilling people who did not want to help, you know, those who approached them. But the contrast or the opposite of these people is what the nature of God is. Do you understand? So God is not an unwilling ruler or an unwilling friend whom you have to go and keep shaking and saying, please do it, do it, do it. We don't have to do that. In fact, what did we study in Matthew chapter 6? We studied that he is a heavenly father. And he himself said, you know, uh, give us this day our daily bread. You pray, you ask. So when God has asked us to reach out to him, we need to understand that he is willing to do what his word promises us. So that is one difference in these stories and who God is. In these parables, the people were unwilling, but our God is willing. Okay, so that is the um, first difference. Second one is that these people are going on asking repeatedly, isn't it? Give me justice, give me bread, give me something to give my visitor. But as Sean said, in our relationship with God, yes, initially there might be a phase where we are struggling 
you know with doubts and questions and uh, our faith has not come to its correct uh, position so initially we may be praying the same thing repeatedly and you know saying god you know i want to see this breakthrough do this but once your faith is in action right it comes into action from that point onwards persistence does not mean asking okay so you move from asking to giving thanks so it's a very confident um position that you take in prayer because now you have faith you are confident so what are you saying you're saying god i i want to thank you that you know this is going to happen at the right time you will cause this to happen thank you that your word is true thank you that you know uh, or declarations you confess the word so you are in a place of faith and confidence even in persistence who is a good example of somebody who gave thanks during their waiting time yes louder give it a try david okay yeah david you could say in during his hard times he gave thanks to god i will bless the lord at all times okay sure uh, anyone else waiting for the promise of god abraham okay i'm sure you've studied in uh, faith the course faith romans chapter 4 he gave thanks to god so when it comes to persistence it's like that initially we we are in that asking mode but eventually what happens is we go to a place where we are already confident in our hearts that god is going to do it so it's more of um giving thanks praising god and speaking and declaring what god is going to make manifest in our lives now my next question to us is if we are confident that god is going to do it it's god's will god has given the promise he will do it why the wait why can't god just do it right now why should we wait preparation okay nice that's true preparation is one of the reasons yes in his time okay god's timing god's yes uh, shirada to develop a character okay good so can i put that in preparation develop a character timing yes i think is to see like how willing you are and what you're asking for how i think i want to see how willing you are and what you're asking for how willing you are yeah okay more like a test yeah maybe because okay i mean mm. uh, if you can take like uh, abraham's uh, abraham example when god came and talked to abraham and come the next day and speak to him he had like a huge like a uh, you know a gap between uh, his conversation with god i think mean, that's one thing because on all those years abraham had to like you know uh, have faith in god's promise you know god will just come like once and speak to him. maybe he'll just he'll speak to him after like 10 years or so so i think that's a good example to you know see about um, uh, his faith in god's promise mm. i mean he didn't um, i mean after in his new uh, i think uh, 80 or 80 or something is when he had isaac mm. and uh, very uh, at the way it's too old to you know to have a child at that time but it is made possible mm. Okay, sure. Yeah, and that child uh, that and he was told to sacrifice the child, and he had complete faith on God. Even, uh, no, uh, even though he hasn't yet fulfilled his uh, promise that he has told in the, uh, the in the first place, the first mm. promise. Okay, so I get where you're coming from. So yeah. it's more like a test of character, test of your, you know, the preparation of your heart. Okay, fine. That's that's another reason. So. if god is so willing i told you that in the parables there were unwilling people but god is willing and god is the one who is promising so why the wait your answers are preparation building character timing what else what else sorry great things need time okay okay great things take time so thanks vimal for that quote 
Yeah. Another reason why things take time is it may not be like uh, if God has to do it, maybe because on your side also. Because uh, if you have faith, if you're praying on something, you shouldn't have doubt on what you pray. Because once you have doubt, doubt is Satan, and immediately that uh, whatever you prayed for will go away. If you have, suppose you pray that I want a guitar or something, and uh, you and uh, you have faith in what you prayed in, but later on you think, can I afford a guitar? Will I be able to buy a guitar? You know, uh, due to what I get this, uh, you know, uh, payment I get this, will I be, be able to afford the guitar? And you have this type of doubts, you won't get the guitar in the end, and your prayer mm -hmm. won't be answered. Yeah. So we've not come to that place of faith. Yeah. And that's not God's fault, right? Yeah. Like when we have faith, then we know we can receive. If you don't doubt in your heart and you believe the word of God says, you you will ask and you will receive that. But if we are taking a long time to come to that place of faith, it's not God's fault that we still don't have faith, right? So then the delay happens because we have not come to a place of faith. That's true. Yeah, that's another reason. Any other lot of discussion going on there? So any research outcomes? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Vinay, tell me. You're play, uh, praying about the unwilling of God, uh, who is not unwilling about that matter. Yeah, tell me, Vinay, once again, I uh, couldn't hear you. God is unwilling what you are praying for. Uh, should God, like, uh, if you ask more times, should God provide that? Okay, so I, I'm still not able to hear you. Oh, you're. You're asking for things which God is not willing to, not give, willing us. to give us. But if you pray on and on uh, persistently, if God is will change his mind on. Okay, yes. okay, I got that question. All right. So, uh, what if we are praying for the things which are not in God's will for us? So then also there is a delay, right? We don't get it. Uh, and there was a question along with it: Will God give it to us? Okay. Will God give it to us? Uh, so, you see, the context of what we are talking about today is prayers which are being prayed in the will of God. So, when we pray in the will of God, there are delays. So, that's that's the context. But uh, to just answer Vinay's question, obviously, if you are praying for the wrong thing and God is not doing, there's a big delay. Because it's like Jonah. You don't go there, you go there, you're wasting, you know, your time. But then, uh, will God allow you to do that? Yeah, I think it, it completely depends. Okay, and it's hard to say. Because in a situation like Jonah's, we know that God had to intervene and say, no, you cannot. I'm sending you to a particular place, you have to go there. But if you look at... Um, you know, certain instances, it happened like Saul. God called Saul, God anointed Saul, and God's plan for Saul was that he would be the ruler. He would rule and reign. But he was disobedient to God. And the scriptures tell us that God was so unhappy. He was sad that he picked Saul to be the king, and he had to take David. So what happened? God allowed Saul to, I mean, I'm just saying allowed, but it was more of Saul's decision to go his own way. So I think in certain instances, uh, though you're, like, you're headed in the wrong path, God intervenes. But then some situations, yeah, if I believe, you know, there's like a thin line. If you cross that line, you know, if you're very hard hearted, that even God cannot minister, like we're not listening to God, then what can God do? He'll just let us have our choice. Yeah, sure. Yes. I think uh, another reason why like God doesn't intervene as much is uh, because I think that I mean God has given us free will you know from the beginning when he created us he gave us free will so if he kept intervening in our lives whenever we make mm. a decision or so then it would totally negate the reason that he gave free will correct correct so, You're uh, right. yeah so yeah. in the end it's uh, it's up to us as to what choices to make and if we really need like God's uh, God's help to make mm. a decision then we can just uh, we can just pray to God and ask for God's guidance for it. Mm. Or yeah, it's not like necessary that God has to intervene every single time. Correct. So and God won't do that. He won't keep interfering. 
because as sean is saying we all have free will so he expects us to take charge of our own lives so now let's look at some of the key reasons why we need to be persistent or persevere in prayer all the reasons that you all shared are very valid but here are three very important reasons one of course is timing okay god's timing we may think that you know we have to be um doing something right away but there is a certain time to that for example uh, when uh, god's people went into babylonian captivity so there was a prophecy by jeremiah he said 70 years in babylon after that they will come out so even if they tried to come out it may not happen because that prophetic word had already gone forth that 70 years they will be under captivity so that timing had to be fulfilled and we will you know read later on that uh, uh, daniel was somebody he read the scriptures and he was aware of the timings of god so he was aware that those 70 years are coming to a completion and so he begins to pray and ask god for the freedom of the people so that way for a nation for a, a region for individuals families there is god's timing you know we cannot work outside of god's timing second demonic interception demonic interception so can somebody quickly read uh, daniel 10 12 and 13 my please yeah do not fear daniel for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your god your words were heard and i have come because of your words but the prince of the kingdom of persia which stood me 21 days and behold M- M- michael on of the ship prince came to help me for i had been left alone there with the kings of persia mm. okay so this is an incident where daniel was praying about something okay and uh, sorry about that yeah daniel was praying about something and he was seeking god's answer but at that time no he had an angel come to him so this is daniel chapter 10 verses 12 and 13 where the angel comes to him and tells him that the moment you started praying okay so the moment you started praying your prayer was heard before your god your words were heard and i have come because of your words so the moment the prayer went up was there an answer yes there was an answer but there was interference so there are there is a mention of names such as chief princes um no no kingdom of persia with the prince of the kingdom of persia which stood me 21 days so what is happening no when we study about believers authority we will also talk about um satan and the way satan works and satan also has a kingdom of his own where he has you know um, rulers he has um you know uh, spirits of wickedness so he has all these demonic spirits that work along with him so what's happening here when daniel prayed god answered the prayer immediately but one of the demonic authorities named as prince of persia okay prince of persia in the you could say like the unseen realm in the unseen realm the demonic force is coming against the answered prayer so the prayer has to come down to daniel you can imagine that you know the prayer answer has to come down to daniel but the prince of persia is stopping it but the good thing is daniel continued to pray that is what we call as persistent prayer he didn't give up in prayer so when he was continuing to pray what happened angels were released so that's what you see here 
you have some of the the mighty angels who are released and they fight the prince of persia and finally the answer comes to daniel how long after how long 21 days 21 days but daniel had to pray for those 21 days what if he gave up and said god is not answering my prayer so sometimes there is an answer there is a delay in the answer because demons are interfering okay in the spiritual realm from the answer uh, to get it, for for it to get to us you understood what i'm saying so that is why we must not give up we must keep praying we must keep declaring you got it we must stand on the word and the promise and say no god said it it will happen god said it this is god's word he will pour out his spirit so what do we do we stand on the word and we don't give up so when we are doing that it's like saying that you know uh, there is this whole spiritual dynamics going on in heaven where angels are released they are fighting with the demon um, uh, hindrances and slowly the answer will come to us yes francis question yeah this one only daniel 10 12 to 13 yeah can just go through that again how do you know that it's demonic force so in this case god reveals it okay so the angel comes no in verse 13 but the prince of the kingdom of persia which stood me 21 days and behold michael one of the chief chief princes came to help me so one of the angels is talking who is michael michael is also another angel so the angels fought against the demonic princes so that is revealed to daniel so he came to know there was a hindrance now in our situation i would say that the holy spirit because romans 8:16 it says the spirit bears witness with our spirit so we might not know the reason for the delay but sometimes sometimes we would know because the holy spirit tells us that okay so that way uh, can we take a break because it's 9:50 uh we'll all get a break and then we will come back and go ahead yeah thank you